name is Jack Brennan. I'm a stationary engineer at the University of Illinois Circle Campus. I've been a member of Local 399 since 1982. My son is fourth generation. My grandfather, my father, I'm in it. My son is a. I think it was originally they had a union, a local union, in the sanitary district. Early 1900s, Local 399 was founded back in the 1800s, and I believe they were called the Union of Steam Operators because all the buildings were steam, all the heavy equipment was steam at the time. The heavy equipment didn't come into play after 399 was the first operating engineers in okay. uh, I think they changed the name in the 20s to International Union of Operating Engineers. So the, the union was originally German and Dutch, so Irish didn't get in until about the 1920s. Uh, my grandfather transferred in from the local 402 in 1920, and there were a number of other old country Irish who transferred in at the same time. Right now, the union is probably mostly Irish. Uh, there's a good amount of minorities. There's a lot of Hispanics, Blacks, women are taking up the trade now. That's basically operating and maintaining buildings, office buildings mostly. Uh, I work at the university. We have one campus has high pressure steam. My campus has high pressure hot water. There's also a chiller plant. There's cogeneration plant on each side of the campus. To become an operating engineer, you have to join the apprenticeship program. It's a two-year program. You have to take core classes, go work as an apprentice in a building, and it's typically after you have two years in as a member. The chief engineer will write a letter for you, and you can take the license exam. If you pass it, then you can become a journeyman. Yeah. clock doesn't start on being an apprentice until you join the union. So you may have two or three classes before you actually sign up and become a member. Camaraderie, you know members, if you, if you participate, you go to the meetings, you stay abreast with what's going on, you go to the different dinners, and you associate with people, it's like going to a family party, except there's 3,000 people. You know, they have a golf outing every year, that's, uh, they take up four golf courses, that's actually coming up next month. Getting together, improving the job, there's classes you can take, improve your skills if need be. Um, you know, I'm at the par I'm at the tail end, but uh, somebody young coming up, they built a new uh, training center that's state of the art. Uh, it's probably the second biggest one in the country. They built one in Texas that's even bigger uh, that uh, has both stationary and operating engineers that have the equipment. Uh, 399 is stationary. We don't run heavy equipment bulldozers you know, uh, cranes, things like that. That would be local 150. The, the difference between a union job and a non-union job? Money, I mean, you know, the, you, have, you hear the argument, oh, we don't need a union. Well, if you want to make 15 to $20 less an hour, take the non-union job. You can go on, on the internet, Indeed, in those places, and look at engineer jobs. The non-union ones are paying 20 some dollars an hour or less. Downtown Boma contract, they just negotiated, uh, I think, forty six seventy one an hour. Is that three ninety nine? That's three ninety nine. That's stationary engineering. You have health and welfare, you have a retirement account, uh, which right now I think they're contributing, give or take, right around five dollars an hour into the pension if you're working forty hours a week. Uh, the pension fund is probably ninety nine percent solvent. Uh, it's always been something. Uh, sometimes it takes a little dip if there's a crash, but I don't think it's ever gone below like 85%.
for the last 50 years, unions have been demonized and, and broken down. How do you feel today in 2023 about the unions and where they're heading? Hopefully they're heading on the uptick. Uh, the difference you have now is you don't have manufacturing like you used to have. And the manufacturing, you don't need a thousand people in a plant because they have robots to do it. Uh, it seems like the unions are coming up more in the service industries. Uh, Starbucks, waiters, McDonald's, uh, places where you typically wouldn't see unions before. Um, I think it's good. I think young people have a better opinion of unions than young people did back in the 1980s. Uh, 1980s started corporate greed, uh, you know, buyouts, all the corporate raiders. Gordon Gecko. Gordon Gecko, let's buy a corporation, fire everybody, and sell off the assets. Uh, hopefully that will go away. In, in the gulf between, the vast gulf between the have and have nots. It's I mean, the highest it's been since the Gilded Age. Yeah. Well, Teddy Roosevelt is the one that started busting that up. I think Joe Biden's too old to do that, but I think we, I would like to see somebody who, who will do it. That, that supports the unions, and it was right. good to see uh, with the, so the uh, the writer strike and the actor strike in Hollywood. It's that's a big big deal, and the two now combined uh, with the, the actors joining the writers. CEO from Netflix though went on just recently. He's like, I came from a union family. It was really kind of encouraging that he he had you know empathy and he understood what it's like. He's like, I, I get it, and we want to bring these people back together. Artificial intelligence is going to put a lot of people out of work. Is there any talk of AI? Are you guys dealing with that yet? In terms of what we do? Yeah. No. Um, you know, we're running equipment and maintaining the equipment. Uh, the AI, I'm sure, is going to come into play at some point, uh, but I don't really see it affecting us in the near future. In the long run, I'm sure it will. They have most of their pickets now are when they're trying to organize somebody a hospital out in Pena that we were on strike at. Uh, it was a Catholic hospital it's since it's been brought out. They wouldn't recognize the union. We put pickets up a couple of times. I was out there twice on the picket line and uh, they eventually settled. I was on my first picket line six or seven. It was General Mills. They wouldn't, they couldn't come to terms on a contract. So that was. It had to last probably three to four weeks. I, I was too young to remember a lot of specifics about it, but I know it was a bad one. Um, it was in South Chicago, Indiana. General Mills pretty much owned the entire town and the police force. So the police were not friendly to the picketers. Back in 1978, when the Marriott Hotel opened up on Michigan Avenue, there was a six month strike there. They didn't want to, want to hire anybody union. Uh, the, the founder of Marriott was totally anti-union, would not recognize a union in one of his hotels. Uh, there was a hotel that they bought in New York that they inherited a union. That was the only hotel in the country. Uh, they were asking leading questions when they were interviewing people to try and weed out union members. And the strike was for unfair labor practices. It lasted 180 days. You know, preferably you, you know, you can get along with tenants if, if you're in an office building. You can get along with the other engineers. You're not going to like everybody. You don't have to like everybody, but you've got to do your job. It's like anywhere else. You are going to spend a lot of time with either a handful of people or a bigger crowd. I mean, just because there's work groups, uh, depending on how big the building or your, your job is. You, just, you have to learn to get along with people. You have to also be flexible. Uh, things happen. You know, mostly things run pretty smoothly, but, you know, pipes burst. You, you have to react to and you have to react quickly. Um, without getting flustered. 
high pressure hot water, uh, what they do is they bring the boiling point, they go past the boiling point, it's about 300 degree water, and they, they keep it from flashing with, the, uh, with nitrogen. But if one of the pipes blow, uh, you know, they had a geyser one year where one of the pipes blew in the water, the, the, the 300 degree water was spraying 40 feet into the air. Uh, it, it can kill you quickly. The same thing with high pressure steam, it's 140 pounds of pressure. And that can, you know, that'll kill you. It's a good job. Uh, you know, with the apprentice program, if you go through the entire program, you wind up with an associate's degree, and then you can take that associate's degree. I know they have a, uh, a relationship with the Illinois Institute of Technology. You can get your fourth year degree, and depending on the situation, you can get up to 70% off tuition while you're working, making $46 an hour. So it's a great alternative to taking out student loans and going away for four years and coming home owing $200,000 in student debt. Once you start making money, you can move out. You know, if, if you're itching to get out of the house but you don't have the money for tuition, going through an apprenticeship program is a good, a good thing to do because once you get your license, you're going to be making a mistake. In closing, um, I think that a lot of people now are seeing that the trades are an alternative. Uh, there's a lot of people that have other types of jobs in the workforce and they're working in 399 now. Uh, traders, you name it. A lot of white collar professionals working in 399. And also, you know, if you work in a building, depending on how big the company is, and if you have your degree, which you can get through the program, you can move up into a white collar job. A lot of members that have white collar jobs, and they're technically not an engineer at work, but they're still in the union. Oh, wow. Well, that's great to know. All right, Jack, well, thank you so much for your time and thanks for being a part of it. Thank you.